here is a hare's mask and obviously hare's ear asks for a hare's ear but if you want you can obviously include this part here which is right be uh, between the eyes cheeks are a little bit softer with less guard hairs but like literally the face between the eyes towards the nose of the rabbit is very good for it too you can use it for uh, a bit bigger flies this dubbing here is very short and that very very stiff so it's a kind of tricky to it's kind of tricky to to dub uh, but there is a way to it of course so what I want to do is this one I honestly don't like because as you can see those ears are very curved so it's very difficult to reach with scissors over there uh, I don't have razor blade but I don't think razor razor blade would help much to it or even trimmer beard trimmer wouldn't uh, wouldn't help to it so I have to go snip by snip here so I'll just go like this a little bit by little bit I already took some so I just go and then take it away it's not difficult I mean you, you need just a couple of cuts it's like so this is the, the the root of the ear so the hair is a bit longer easier to dub as I said but when you go into this short one it's when you go into this short one here it can be quite tricky because it's very stiff as I said uh, this here you can just remove manually because it's like as you can see as you can see very difficult to reach but here you can go but it's very short hairs very short hairs here like just maybe three millimeters not more than that so this is part that you want to take with your hands so just pinch it like this with your nails or i saw that i think Oliver Edwards in one of the, his videos as a, when I was a kid he was using some kind of a comb that he would just scrape through through the ear and he would pick up the dubbing so when you think you have enough uh, just put it in a coffee blender coffee grinder actually so this is how it looks here and just a few short pulses is enough <laughs> You have very nice fluffy hairs ear dubbing. Obviously, this is basic fur, but you can add some CDC, you can add some flash, or whatever you wish. And this is the basic dubbing. It's hairs fur. As you can see, it's very fluffy. Uh, it has a couple of those places where the hair is uh, stuck together, but this is more. Uh, to the, due to the fact that this is uh, quite greasy fur so I will need to to wash those heads I didn't wash them prior to after I bought them so uh, it would be very smart to wash those things because you will dub them more easily so uh, to start here's gold ripped here's ear I want to first determine uh, where I want my body to start obviously head and where I want it to end, where fly, where it starts, where it ends. Don't go too much into the bend to obstruct the hook cap, uh, to hook bend, and hook uh, hook up rate to for when you fish it. Uh, don't go too short, obviously, unless that's your intention. Just when it, it goes down here, it bends, and when just near this more abrupt bend, just stop a little bit before it, almost to achieve almost straight body. So between this point and this point, I want to de determine where I want to stop with my abdomen and it's going to be around here. So for the thorax, I need roughly around one third of the hook shank. So I'll start where I want to end my abdomen. Okay. And now, counter spin the bobbin holder, straighten up the wire just to have it a little bit more under control. I like to put my vise sideways because I can see what I'm doing with wire. As you can see. Okay. I'll cover the wire here and go back, achieving slight taper for start. This is just for the start, as I said. 
Now, the next step is to add some tails. Uh, tails traditionally is for the tails. I'm uh, traditionally is used those guard hairs from the hairs mask, and I'll snip off just a thin bunch of it, like so. Now this has under fur, so if like some people you tie it like this, it would look like an extension, extended body, or trailing shock or whatever. But it doesn't look like a small. A nymph that you're trying to get. What I like to do, I just grab those tips very firmly, pull up, pull away those uh, under fur, and then just clean up if I have anything left. And then I want this to be tied somewhere around this point, orange point. Those curved ones I don't like, I'll just remove them. They're too curved for this purpose. I mean, for what I want to achieve. So I'll just tie it like so around here. And I just determined where I want to cut this. So I have pre cut everything. Now, I'll use pinch and loop to grab and secure the tails. Okay. And then with flat thread, obviously, upward tightening of the thread I just tighten up so it doesn't rotate the material doesn't rotate around the hook so soft wrap up soft wrap up and as you can see material stays up so this is controlled pressure very tight around material tight near but not tight as strong so soft I'm not moving the hook up soft up and then I just proceed down now by this point I already created a bit of taper by flattening the thread I have more control over my taper and I'll just use it to create a little bit more now this point here you don't want too abrupt because if it's too abrupt the material can slip down and cause some trouble to you when you tie in so I want this tapered a bit let me check it one more time and that's it. I'm just checking it from all, the, all sides. Now let's discuss dubbing. You can use hair's ear. I'm using both orange or natural hair's ear. It's from the ear, actual ear. But the, the difference in hairs is like very significant. Uh, first of all, you need something wet to wet your fingers or you need some dubbing wax or whatever to make some friction between your fingers. But if you're using some something sticky, don't use too much because you will just mat down those uh, hairs. You don't want that. So make some friction between your finger and fingertips. So use as little as you can of the dubbing, press it against the thread and make one rub. Then it will stay around the thread. Not nice, but just stay. Then do it one more time and you'll get a nice thin noodle. If you need more, repeat the process. If you need more, repeat process. And then when you have it on your thread, you can just um, tighten it with your fingers. Notice how much I use, I use pressure like my fingertips, they just literally fingernails they change color they become white that's my that's the pressure I'm using to break those hairs and to make them uh, curl around the thread now let me show you that it's around the thread as you can see all the way now when I want to remove it because it's coarser it's easier a little bit but if you used something softer it will attach around the thread even better but this is also not too bad because I needed a couple of pulls to remove all the dubbing. On the other hand when I'm using softer fur from those domestic hairs it's also nicely and nicely spiky but it's more like squirrel if you ask me more like that it's more softer it's more suitable for the smaller flies this is size 16 and um, I'll just Use small pinch, press it against the thread, roll it. So small pinch, press it, roll it. When you when you are adding those pinches, overlap, 
overlap slightly, make them interlock with one another, each pinch interlocked with the next one. So the compact noodle, you will make compact noodle, that's your point. Make it in layers, I also made a video about it a couple of weeks ago. And that's it, your dubbing will be very firmly uh, interlocked around the thread. Now when you think you have enough, you can just, I'll just, because my thread is not near the end, I'll just slide down my dubbing, so, like so, and go back with my thread. So, go here, and as tight as you can, without breaking the thread, go around and cover the abdomen. Okay, when that's done, here is the reason why I placed wire on the far side. It will go down, away from the tails, and then, without displacing tails, I can just rip the body. Now with two wraps, I'll secure this, bend the wire to pull towards me without rotating the wire, although wire is difficult to rotate around the hook shank. And then I'm making this place here a little bit flatter and a little bit wider, which will help me for my next step, placing of the wing case cover. For the wing case cover, I'm going to use owl feather. And the reason why I'm using owl feather is because I like it. It's lively and nice. And I'm aware that a lot of you guys in the US are not allowed to use this. So use any substitute you like. When it comes to uh, width of the feather, just maybe it's okay to make it, I don't know, like a hook gap uh, width. Try to mount it more or less, I don't know, For in my opinion it looks like mounting the wing for the slip wings. So I do the soft wrap, so I do, my thread is more or less neutral, it doesn't drop left or right, so I have more control to it, it's flat. Make one soft wrap and another, and then slowly, gradually tighten everything up. Now at this point, you have your legs here if you want them, if you don't want them, just cut them off. Okay, I need one more. Now, I want to check so, my thread goes all the way, now, here, the abdomen ends, thorax begins, or whatever. And, uh, wing case cover is more or less on the side, on the middle of the side of the hook. Barbs are still married, almost completely, and now it's time to put some dubbing on. I'm using the same dubbing, so, pretty raw, no added additional materials here, just plain hairs here dubbing, rolling it, and this time I can actually make a little bit thicker dubbing noodle, because at some point I will want to brush out those hairs and make legs for the nymph, that's the reason why I cut those from here, I just didn't want to bother to split them at the end, because after you tie the, the whip finish knot, or just a couple of reps before whip finish knot, you have to split those legs sideways, tie the last whip finish knot, and it's just too much trouble for something you can achieve easily with just dubbing the thorax. Hope this may makes sense. Now, you want to go not here, at the point where you tied the last rep of thread, but you want to go a little bit further back further back to cover wing case and this is how to this is actually how you make it bulbous uh, like half ball shape on the, at the on the top now I'll add a little bit first of all I will add a little bit of thread here to make more friction so the material is caught a little bit better let me see softer As you can see, I'm using small pinches. 
and relatively tight but a lot of those hairs is sticking out meaning the noodle is not super tight now make this thicker than the abdomen this is place for the head that's it that's all I need and now I'll okay, just go back a little bit now you want to pull this I unmarried those barbs but never mind I'm just gonna pull them together like so so control the width by making them flat control the width now again I'm look where I place my nail over here that's how I control where I want my thread to be soft wrap goes over and I'm going to put those wraps back towards the tail Now the reason why I did it is because I want to have clear space here to cut the materials and have room for the very clean head if possible. But I can see some hairs that I missed here. So I'll just go back like so, clear out my way to make nice and clean head spin the bobbin counterclockwise to make flat thread because that's very important for your web finish cover up this and go back now at this point I have clear path towards the front and let me see one two adjacent wraps three and four it's very important that you have nails and around your nails clear without any cuts because it can fray your thread I almost frayed mine now so flat thread so your web finish knot will lay better it will be more uh, flat and smooth which means more durable because trout's teeth cannot grab for anything there. Last step, a little bit of brushing, getting those legs out and here it is, gold draped hair's ear in orange that I will use for sight fishing probably or fishing in shallows. Uh, long leaders usually for this if I'm using it for sight fishing because I'm, I'm looking at fish behavior not looking at anything else. I'm not seeing this nymph obviously under the water unless I'm fishing very close, uh, which is quite unlikely because it's quite dull in color. So it's quite unlikely that I will be able to see it, but I can always observe fish's behavior and when it opens mouth or move to the side or does anything extra like out of the ordinary, I'll just set the hook. Uh, you can use it under the indicator if you wish, under the dry fly as well. You can use it as you wish and it will catch you some fish because hair's ear along with pheasant tail are two top producers I think in the world when it comes to nymphs. Obviously you can add some um, tungsten bead over here to make it heavier or you can add some split shots in front to again make everything heavier and go deeper if you need something like this to go deeper so guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video please give it a like subscribe and see you next week